Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Reckless to Redeemed. Today we are going to talk about forgiveness and how important it is for us to forgive others and forgive ourselves. Luckily, we have Jesus Christ on our side and he is bearing those sins for us and died on the cross. So we are able to even be here today and share this good news with you guys. Forgiveness is so important in your walk with Christ and just in general, because we carry hurt when we don't choose to forgive our past and move forward and just let Jesus take those burdens away from us. Yes. And I feel like so many times I have realized like I'm holding on to so much hate in my heart and all I'm doing is creating bitterness in my life. It's not even affecting that person that I'm mad at. It's really just affecting myself. It's funny because like any little thing that I would even hear about that person, I was like instantly triggered. And it came to the point where I just had to go to God about it. And I was like, God, I'm just, I'm mad. I'm angry. And he's like, well, you haven't forgave them. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, they haven't apologized, so I don't need to forgive them. But that's, that's not always the case. Unfortunately, not everybody is going to apologize. So even when people don't say they're sorry, we still have to forgive them, move on with our lives. Doesn't mean you have to move on with being best friends with this person or whoever it may be in your life. They don't have to be a huge part of your life, but you don't want to live with all this hate in your heart. And I always reflect back to Jesus because the fact that not only was he nailed to a cross, prior to that, he was being mocked, whipped, beat, and yet now he's nailed to the cross. People are still yelling at him, making fun of him, saying, yeah. if you're really, you know, the son of God, get yourself off the cross and just complete m- mockery. And yet he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And yet I'm holding on to maybe something super minor that somebody did to me. And just because they won't apologize, I'm just going to live with all this hate towards them. It seems ridiculous. Yeah, you almost get trapped like in your own little prison when you continue to have things happen to you from your past and people that have done you wrong. And you're constantly just being reminded of all the things they've done when you don't just give out forgiveness and let Jesus take on those burdens and let him show you, you know, grace and be merciful in our situations because it's very hard to forgive people. It's extremely hard, you know, and it's very hard to forgive ourselves as well from the things that we've done in our past as well. It's just so important to be able to just lean on Jesus during these times that you are just feeling angry about something that someone has done to you or something that you have done because Jesus will give you the comfort and will show you that, you know, in order for you to move on, you have to let go and let God control mm-hmm. the end, all, all your circumstances, all of your situations and all of your past hurt. He is able to mend all those pieces and use it for the greater good. No matter how big your sin is, God will always be greater. And there's so much power in the word of forgiveness and behind forgiveness, because Jesus is our representation on why we are supposed to be forgiving others, because he bare our sins. And as long as we are not forgiving, we are basically like poisoning ourselves and poison will attack poison. So we're going to constantly be just battling this pain and carrying around this weight that was not meant for us because that's the whole reason Jesus died on the cross so that we can ask for forgiveness and we can repent to him and have him clear our minds and renew us into people before the pain and before the hurt. Yeah. And a part of forgiveness too, like you'd said at the beginning, you also have to forgive yourself. You know, I kind of talked a little bit about this in a previous podcast, but maybe you're living in regret. Like you feel like you've made so many mistakes or maybe you're a parent and you feel like the first X amount of times of your kid's life, you weren't there and you hate yourself for it, but you're not that person. And 
Jesus forgave you and he forgot, you know, it says that he will remember your sins no more. And so there's nothing wrong with being like, I'm so happy that I'm not that person anymore, but to sit and dwell and be angry Mm -hmm. with yourself, you're, yeah, you're living in a prison within yourself. You're hating yourself for the person you're not even to this day. Just like, I feel like if somebody came to you from the past and maybe they were a horrible person, but they came to you, have completely changed their life around the likelihood is you would be so proud of that person. I know for a fact, if somebody came to me from my past and they are just this completely redeemed person, I mean, I would be like, wow, that's incredible. Like Mm -hmm. looking at this person was this person in their past and the person they are today, it's just an incredible testimony to see where they came from. So you also need to look at it the same way with yourself is you have an incredible testimony to show other people that you can change and that change comes through redemption through Jesus. Right, exactly. Just like 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And I love that scripture because there's so many things that we do in our life that we get so ashamed of. And as Christians, when we first start our journey, truly having a relationship with Christ, he starts to reveal to us all of the unforgiveness in our heart and all of the pain that we have carried around for so long. And I think forgiveness is so important. And especially like you were talking about forgiving yourself because we're hurting ourselves when we don't forgive ourselves. There's things that you do before you have Christ in your heart that is something that you would never do because you're only thinking about yourself. You're only thinking Mm -hmm. about your own circumstances. And I know there was a time in my life that I was in a situation that was not very healthy, was not very good. And I was constantly thinking about just, you know, myself in that. I was young. I had two kids. I decided to make a decision that ultimately I wasn't thinking about in that moment how it's going to impact my future, how it's going to impact my mental health. It basically impacted everything. And I had no knowledge on that when I did it because I didn't have Christ in the center of my life. I know that now I would never do something like that. I had to forgive myself and really come to realization and have Jesus on my back and know that he forgave me for this thing that I never in a million years would do to this day. But it's very hard for us to forgive. It takes a lot of talking to God and having patience with your own feelings, you know, going based off of something that's not your own understanding because we we're human flesh. We think about ourselves and a lot of times we don't like to think about others and situations. And this is something that I've really wanted to talk about, but I've been super nervous to share because I feel like that God is using this for the greater good, even though it was something that was horrific that happens. I am willing to share it with you guys because we are raw and we are vulnerable on this podcast and we are here to spread the truth and how Jesus can redeem you from your past. So back in 2018, I had a circumstance where I thought that that I was literally not going to make it through this situation. I found I was pregnant. It was one of those pregnancies that was extremely unexpected. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was just getting out of a situation that was not good for me. I could barely afford my kids. I was about to have to live at my mom's house because I was just coming out of a relationship. And it was all just very confusing on top of being an alcoholic at the time and drinking all the time. And I made a decision to terminate the pregnancy due to my fear and my own emotions, thinking I was going to be limited not realizing that our God is greater and that he's not going to put us through something that we can't get through. And so since then, I thought that I was just going to have that and I was never going to, that's just eliminate it, eliminate it altogether, the whole thought. It didn't work like that. It stayed with me, you know, for years after that. And this is before I had Christ. So when I got to know Christ, I got to grieve that. And I felt 
you know, like he still loves me regardless of that. And I thought that was unforgivable. And I think that I felt very unlovable for so long just because I was so ashamed of that decision that I made. If I could encourage just anybody that's in a circumstance like that, that God is greater and continue to think that this isn't the plan that was supposed to happen, but this is the plan that God gave you and you are going to be able to handle it because it took me a long time to be able to come to terms with this forgiveness that I am forgiven. And I remember talking to you so many times, like, I just feel guilty and it's so hard. It really is tragic. And I think that a lot of people don't realize when they make that decision that you're ending a life. It's very, very precious and important. Baby is formed and God has a plan for that baby as soon as that baby is conceived. Like God already knows the plans for that baby's life. And I never even took that in consideration. I was just all about myself. But the the raw truth about it is when you go in there to do something like that and you decide to make that decision, it is going to stick with you. You're going to have triggers from that. You're going to have times where you really just lash out and you're just angry. You don't realize that you are carrying that burden. You're carrying that sin around. And Jesus didn't just die on the cross for nothing. He died so he can carry those sins with them and take them, you know, take them away and give us forgiveness again, make us new. I am so grateful to have this perspective now that I have Jesus, because now I can talk to young teens that might be dealing with a teen pregnancy or talk to young moms who are like, I can't handle another kid. I can't do it because there is a way and God isn't going to let you down. He will not fail you. He wants these plans for you just as much as you think that you don't need them and you can't handle them. He wants them for you. And he sees the bigger picture out of all of this. And so I 100% regret that decision, but I know that God turned something so horrible and so tragic and so painful and turned it into something that I'm able to help others possibly save, you know, their baby's lives and not make that decision based off of their own feelings in that moment, because feelings are temporary, but God is forever and his relationship with us is forever. So that's why this episode was so close to me because I've had to deal with the grieving process of that. I've had to talk to God about that. He showed me that my past does not define my future. I am made new in Christ. He is here to just guide me to, to show me that I'm worthy of the King. I'm worthy of his love. And just one big mistake can be turned around to glorify him, even though he did not like the decision that I made. He chose to turn that around and make it great. And it's crazy because so many times in our life, we fail and people doubt us. People think that we are the worst person in the world for making a mistake. Even when you're in high school, they're sitting there making rumors about you. They're bashing you. They're being negative, hateful, hurtful. But Our God isn't any of that. He doesn't come with confusion. He doesn't want to send us pain, but everything that comes our way that is painful, we will come out on the other side with Jesus and he will be there to pick up the pieces, guide us on the path to freedom. And that's what forgiveness truly is, is it's freedom, the chains broken, the the chains of, you know, doubt and shame that I carried around for so long because of that mistake. I am now able to be honest with you guys and be able to be upfront and just hopefully save babies lives because lives matter. And I was a pro-choice person, but I am a pro-life. I have Jesus who have filled me up with the Holy Spirit daily. And he has shown me that there's a way out of none So I know that if anybody is listening to this, just message us, email us, anything. I'd love to talk to you guys about it because you are not alone and we're never alone. We always have Jesus. Well, first of all, I want to say I am so proud of you for sharing that because I know how much you have struggled to want to talk about that. And I know you have wanted to talk about it. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's very, I mean, that is a very hard thing to talk about. I mean, it's being very vulnerable. I remember 
had a lot of regret from that situation too because I was never for abortion but I did not stop you because I didn't stand firm in my beliefs when I feel Mm -hmm. like I should have I was more like well I guess it's your choice but realistically in my heart that's not something I wanted you to do and I felt like honestly probably at that time I didn't put much thought into it but definitely like the more we grew in Christ I thought about that and I just felt like I should have done more to try to steer you away from that decision but again we can't change the past and we can't sit here and dwell on our mistakes or what we could do differently but I remember the one thing that like shattered my heart is when me and you first started talking about God and you were literally like I don't think that God's gonna forgive me because of my abortion Mm -hmm. and I'm like you have no idea he will absolutely forgive you and mm-hmm. I know that's a really, really hard thing that you had to go through. And I feel like, you know, you were able to have seen what what would have happened after that. You never would have made that choice. But like you said, you were just going based off your emotions in that moment. What you felt like was right in that moment. Mm-hmm. The amazing thing about God is he can work everything out for good. Just like you said, he is going to use this. And there's so many people that choose abortion Mm -hmm. and they don't understand what comes with that after the fact they just think oh it's they you know a lot of people don't even think it's a baby they don't even consider it a baby but then they have that abortion and they are living in utter regret because they're looking even maybe their other children like Mm -hmm. I wonder what this child would have looked like you know and so I know he's using that for good and I think it's so incredible that God can take any mess in our life and clean it up and be like, Ashley, girl, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I got you and I'm going to use this for good. Yeah. I am so just blessed that he has given me this love and this opportunity to be able to have this podcast and share this with you guys because this this stuff is not easy and this is hard for us some things that we talk about on here but forgiveness is so important and it's such an important part of your faith journey because we have to forgive others like Christ forgave us for me there's so many other times that I've sinned you know and when we come to Christ and we repent we ask him you know please forgive me father for my sins i did not know i didn't know that this relationship was supposed to be like this. And I'm sorry that I didn't come to you sooner. You know, this is all my stuff before Christ. And it's just like, you just, there's just freedom. There's so much freedom that comes from whenever you finally just admit your wrongs and you just lay it all at the feet of Jesus. He just washes you clean. It's so beautiful. There's so much power in that. Like Matthew 18 verse 21 through 22 then peter came to jesus and asked lord how many times shall i forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times jesus answered i tell you not seven times but 77 times and you know how much forgiveness jesus had to forgive people for mocking him belittling him wanting to kill him all these things and he still died on the cross for us we can forgive the people that hurt us because it's only hurting us not to forgive. So why not let Jesus know everything, lay it all out for him. I need help in this part of my life. I can't seem to forgive this person for what they did. And just let Jesus know how you're feeling, pour out your heart. He will show you what it's like to have forgiveness. I'm quick to forgive now compared to how I used to be, but people don't realize it's holding a grudge It's just chaining you up. That's all it's doing. It's keeping you in prison. It's not letting you break free. But when you repent and you give it all to Jesus, you are just completely made new. You're washed away. You feel like a whole new person. Yeah. And we are in no way, shape, or form saying if you have somebody toxic in your life, right, do not let them continue treating you like garbage. Okay. We're not saying that at all. But don't hold hate in your heart for that person because Mm -hmm. it's only going to destroy you. And the way I like to think about it is like, you know, it says, no, not seven times, but 77 times. 
Can you imagine if Jesus had a meter and once we hit that certain level on that meter, that was it. He was done forgiving us. I mean, that would be really scary, you know, because we mess up, you know, all the time. So we also need to forgive people too. But again, that's not saying, hey, you know, if you're in a toxic relationship right now, or you have a toxic friend or whatever, then that uh, just keep forgiving them. It's okay. No, forgive them. But that doesn't mean continue to let that person treat you just however, because you think that's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not always you're going to be in relationship with that person anymore. There's people in my life that I'm not in any sort of relationship with anymore, but I was holding anger towards them and I had (laughs) to let it go. In order to let go, you have to be like, I'm giving this to God. I'm going to forgive this person and I'm going to move forward. But that doesn't mean I'm going to call him on the phone. Be like, hey, let's get together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. You have to forgive them and, and keep your distance, you know, because, yeah, holding that in your heart is not going to do anything for you. Just like Ephesians chapter four, verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. You guys, we are human flesh. We are sinners. We were born into a sinful world. We have sinful nature. But that's where God comes in. That's where he shows us the compassion and to be able to forgive others and the things that have happened to you in your life. You cannot let your past hold you up any longer. You cannot be chained by all of that pain because all it's doing is just weighing you down. God wants us to be on top of the mountain shouting out, we love Jesus from the mountaintops and not let us just be chained to the ground, limited because we have a limitless God. Through him, all things are possible. I love that verse because it's just so close to me. Like it just hits me because nothing is too great for God. So we're so excited to be able to talk with you guys today about all of this. And I hope that you guys are listening and just letting it soak in your heart that God loves you. God doesn't see your sins no more when you repent to him and when you come to him. And that is just so special that he can renew us and renew our minds just as he always does. Amen. We serve an incredible God. I, I'm just blown away by how amazing he is daily. Mm-hmm. You know, we cry about it because he's just so the goodness of God. I love that song. The goodness of God, because he's just so good. Forgiveness is like one of the most amazing things that our God does is he forgives us. So it's like, why can't we be Christ-like and do the same and forgive those that come against us so we can live in freedom and not, you know, be stressed and worried and angry. And it's just, it's such an amazing feeling. So we are so grateful that you listened in on this episode. And we hope that if you are struggling with forgiving others, that maybe this gave you a little bit of insight. We love you guys so much and we will see you next Wednesday. Yes. Love you guys. Have a blessed week.